All right, so we'll go ahead and get started and we'll catch them up uh, as you guys come online. So the first thing, as you can see, this is our agenda, uh, everything we're going to go over. Uh, to be clear, this is a basics class. So trying to manage the expectations. Went out with the, the uh, frag order that this is basics. This is for the new user um, or someone that's been here but just hasn't been using NCGK or SharePoint. So it's very basic. Um, don't come out of here disgruntled, please, that you didn't get all this fancy custom stuff. We're doing that next week. Um, so you can email us trying to get in on that class if that's what you want. So the first thing we'll go over is uh, SharePoint, basically what it is, uh, 2010 versus 2013, because right now we're, we're in the middle of, uh, I won't say we're in the middle, we're beginning our transition to a new platform, which is SharePoint 2013. Uh, the current NCGKO, if you know what it is, it's uh, SharePoint 2010. So SharePoint, it's a collaboration tool. It's just a collaboration platform produced by Microsoft. Uh, it's a content management system, document repository. It is not meant to replace share drives. Okay? It's meant to enhance them. Basically, the way you can look at it, SharePoint, which I'll throw it up here for NCGKO. It's right here. Um, it's the intranet, the internal network that we use for the National Guard. Um, it's made to house all your documents that you're currently using. So you can basically look at it as, from now, one year back. Okay, all those documents that you're using, they can go in SharePoint. And anything older than that, you want to take off and you want to store on your uh, shared drive for your section or unit. Um, so again, this right here is Microsoft SharePoint um, NCGKO. It's built on that platform. You'll hear them interchangeably. They're the same thing. 2013, um, it looks much different. Right now we're currently transitioning the public site to that. Um, this is, we're building it out right now with our work group. And this is just a quick look of what it looks like. It is going to be different, but we're going to do a whole round of training for 2013 when we go to that. Um, this is the public site. It's set to go live 20 February. Uh, so it won't have a big impact on most people uh, internally. However, in December we're supposed to transition to um, the internal network going to 2013, so that's going to impact everyone. Yeah, a little better. Well, if that comes up. All right, so we also just went over the uh, North Carolina's uses of SharePoint. Um, can't really think of any other from there. If you have questions, please, you don't have to wait till the end. Just throw your hand up, and uh, we'll take care of them as they come. So what's required to access? So if you've never been, you, have, you haven't been using it, or you get someone new in your section, or you are that new person, uh, this is what's required to access it. So number one, CAC. Uh, number two, you have to have an RCAS account. If you don't have an RCAS account, then you need to submit the uh, request form that you can get from the public site. Uh, to the help desk, to the G6. They'll set you up an RCAS account. You have to go through your uh, information assurance, Curtis training. Once you have that, update your mail connect. Um, and you should, once you register with uh, GKO, you should automatically fall into the North Carolina group and have access. If you do not, contact the help desk. They'll contact me, and I'll make sure you have access. Once you do that, um, like it, like it says here, the access sh registration should be near immediate, but it may take up to sometimes 12 hours. That's rare, though. All right, permissions. So we'll go over that. As a basic user, not a site administrator, you have contribute access to all of NCGKO, all of SharePoint. All right, so as you can see, this is the new 2013 I was talking about, new platform. Um, I'm not going to go into that. Just let everybody see it. It looks different than that. So. All right, so permissions. Again, getting to any page on these, there are very few pages, relatively speaking, to all of them. Few pages and sites that are restricted on access. Right now, everyone in the North Carolina National Guard can edit anything on NCGKO. Okay, the, is, the biggest key to that is if you don't own it, don't touch it. All right. Um, you can go look at stuff. 
download stuff, read it if you want. I mean, there's nothing on here classified. The entire system is uh, FOUO, so there's nothing secret on here. Um, but again, don't change something if it's not yours. Permissions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, your site administrators, they'll be the ones that set up those restrictions. Um, you can set restrictions on websites, on pages, on document libraries, and lists. Um, and then even down to a specific document where everybody can, in the guard, would be able to access that site, that page, and that library. There may be one document in there that they restricted so that only two people can go in there and edit or even download. So it's there, but uh, only the site administrators can set that up. Okay, so layout and navigation. So first off, does everybody know how to get to NCGKO right here? Anybody? Does anybody not know how? Okay. So if you are online, which I hope everybody is by now, uh, go to NCGKO homepage. Give you a minute if you're not already there. Okay, so as you can see up here, if you're not there yet, just follow along and uh, keep working your way to it. Uh, we'll start at the top and work our way down. So this is the home page uh, for the entire North Carolina Guard. So across the top right here, we have clear that out. We have uh, six tab, five tabs: uh, NCG Chaos, Joint Special Staff, Army Staff, MSCs, Quick Links. All right, very useful because they're available on every single site and every single page. All right, so you can call this your your universal ribbon if you want. Um, NCGKO, some of the key things. Got your leaders right there, Joint Special Staff, all your J's, Army, your G's, MSC's, and your quick links. Some quick notes on this if you're looking at stuff, events, your joint planning calendar, MSC execution calendar, and your special events. All right, those three calendars are the ones that can keep you in sync with everything you're doing. All right, with you, your unit, your section. If you use those three, you should, should be a great tool for helping you stay on track. All right, so NCGKO SharePoint Training, this one right here, we'll go to that real quick. So this will take you kind of self-study, self-learning on your own past the knowledge of this class. Okay, so uh, this starts getting into what we're going to teach next week with the site administrator class. Um, however, the class will go even more in depth than this right here. So different things on here, uh, navigation. Each one of these that you click on will give you a how-to document or help document on how you can do it. Create a page, add content, modify web parts, ribbon, content management, list libraries, all these items you can see here, frequently asked questions. And then it's also down the left side with a few additions. So if you have any questions or anything about this site, so you can see here, site administrator right there. Knowledge Management Office, just click that. It'll send us an email. You can drop anything in there you want. We'll address it. Um, what else about this? We're in the process of updating this. It's a slow going process because we have plenty of other things we're doing too. Uh, we're converting all of these documents, these how to's, from, let's see, create a page so you can see what it looks like. We're converting everything like this into video. So everybody just goes on there, click, you watch a 30 second, one minute video, something like that, and that's your information. Uh, they'll also be downloadable so you can keep them wherever you need to. All right, so back to the home page, keep going through the layout. So this part right here, uh, moving our way down, this is your ribbon. So as a basic user, if you don't have anything more than end user contribute permissions, you'll have your site actions, and you may only have two or three buttons on this. All right, your site administrators are gonna have a full list like this. Um, <clears throat> your edit button, if you have the ability to edit pages, and then this page button right here will bring up other items. So as you can see right here, this is a list, an announcements list. Scroll down a little bit. If it's also a document library, and that's a document, you can check it, and it'll open up different options. As you can see right here, when I click that, this uh, list tools pane opened up. You can do different things with those items. And then with the list itself. The list itself is going to be more site administrator. However, you may be able to do some things with it. Um, if you need to, just click the list, see what you can do. If you can't do it, it'll be grayed out. Yeah, 
that. Okay, so you have your universal navigation at the top. That stays consistent across all your sites and pages. And then this right here is a vertical breadcrumb. So as you go deeper into the sites, that list is going to keep dropping down, and that's your way to get back to where you were. All right. The back button up here you can use. However, sometimes Internet Explorer doesn't work, gives you problems. So if you want more consistent, you can use that drop down. Additionally, kind of a duplication uh, on SharePoint's part is this part right here, the gray bar. Uh, that's considered your, uh, called your global navigation. That will change depending on how the site administrator has set it up for that particular site or page. Um, it may look exactly the same if they're inheriting, it may be different. Um, but on a top level site, it's a duplication as you can see with a few additions. This left side over here, this gray area, this is your quick navigation. Again, set up by your administrator, and they can add anything to it. Lists, libraries, uh, surveys, just a regular link to an outside source. If you don't already know, this is your uh, section for MSCs. Got your leadership tab, links, forms and publications. So, forms, publications, and JFHQ policy, if you're dealing with uh, the sections, you can go right here to JFHQ policies, and they're all right there. Um, Lieutenant Trick is uh, in charge of admin services. His section uh, is the one responsible for updating these. Um, well, let me give you a correction on that. They don't update them, but once the work groups update them, his section is in charge of making sure they're posted onto NCGKO timely. I think that takes care of the navigation portion. Anybody have any questions on the layout navigation? Is any of this new to anyone in here? No? All right. Remember that. All right, how to update your profile. Who does not know how to update their profile on SharePoint? All right, sir. Thank you for being honest. All right, so right here. And if you don't have yours, your name looking like that right there in that format, then please uh, follow along and update your profile as we do it. So you just click it. Second option, well, it may change depending on uh, your access, but you're looking for my profile. So you're going to click that one. Take you to this page. You can add an image in there if you want to uh, for your profile pic. You don't have to. Um, just make sure it's classy, you know, branch, something like that, or your DA photo. Uh, and then just underneath your picture, you'll see edit my profile right here. So everything with an asterisk is required. And the stuff that's not uh, required, you can fill in if you want to. So your name, please update that to rank, first name, middle initial, last name. All right. The purpose of standardizing it is because when administrators are looking for people to add to groups so you can get access or we can change access, it makes it much easier if everyone's name is formatted the same. I've literally spent 30, 45 minutes looking for one person. Title, work, phone, department, that's your office symbol. Uh, if you don't know it, go to the uh, that publications area I just showed you on NCGKO, and the uh, approved list of uh, office symbols is on there. Your job title, and I think that might be all the required. Everything else is optional. So once you're done with that, uh, just scroll down and you'll see save and close. Make sure you click that. And again, the update should be immediate, but it may take a, a little bit, a few refreshes to get it going. So, list and library. Does anybody not know? or understand what a list in library is? No? 
All right, so everybody knows everything about it. I'll just hit the basics real quick. All right, so one thing, uh, everybody that's online, if you could, uh, hit the, from the home page, let me back up so I can do it with you. From the home page, you hover over the joint special staff, you'll get a drop down. If you go to J3, then knowledge management office. So if you have ideas, recommendations for improvement, once you're on this site, if you look at the left, just underneath the feedback button, Ideas and recommendations, you click that, it'll bring up a form. You can submit any kind of idea or recommendation to us. Uh, it does not have to be SharePoint related. Please, if you have an idea for improving a process, whether it be technology related or anything else, you know, please uh, send it to us. And if it doesn't exactly pertain to us, we can't affect it, then we'll, we'll send it to the right location and we'll make sure it's tracked. All right, so once you're on the knowledge management site, you'll see the KM test site. Then you're looking for SharePoint training site. All right, you're gonna click that one. It's just a basic site we have set up for this class. Is anybody not there yet? All right, so got a test document. Um, and we have the SharePoint training survey. So at the end of this class, we'll ask you guys to click on that right there, and it will take you to survey page. Respond to the survey right there. Um, not sure if you added anything to it, sir, uh, but it's, it's less than 10 questions, so it won't take too long. They're real simple. Um, we'll back up. All right, list and library. So as you can see, this one on the left, uh, the training library, it's exactly what it says it is, a, a document library. It's where you can simply add documents. Um, if you need to open that document or edit the document, we'll start with opening. If you just want to open it and read it, it's right here. You just click on the uh, title. It'll open up. It'll take its time doing it, but it'll open up. So. That opens up your document. That's just to read it, all right? So at this point, all you've told SharePoint is that you want to read the document. So it opens it up, and as you can see, you have an edit document button. So if you change your mind while you're reading it, and you're like, oh, well, I want to make changes to this, make sure you click that. If you start deleting things on the document, uh, even one period before you hit that edit document button, there are no guarantees that you'll be able to edit the document. So if you forget to do that, and you make a bunch of changes, and then you go back and do that, you may lose them all. So the very first thing you do if you open it up this way and you want to make changes is hit that edit document button. Doesn't do anything special. It just locks the file in SharePoint so nobody else can make changes while you are. Question, sir. Yes. Is there an issue with maybe my profile or something? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. As far as? As far as whenever I hit the edit document. No. Sometimes it's out of fashion. Yeah. No, no. no. Yeah, and and honestly, some of the some of the answers we have to give you are a little hokey, because it's SharePoint and it's SharePoint Civilian works great. SharePoint on .mil network not so great. So when you open those up, sometimes they won't work for you. Sometimes you know just close it, reopen it, try until it does. And going back to that site, so for the documents, where did my site go? Okay, so that's to read it. If you know you want to edit the document, there are two ways to do it and avoid the edit document button. Okay, so you don't even have to worry about whether or not you get it. All right, so if you see the document right here, when you hover over it, you have a drop-down. 
Click on that, hit Edit in Microsoft Word. Cross your fingers. And it opens no edit document because you've already told SharePoint, hey, I want to edit the document, open it in this in edit mode. So that's your first or your second way to edit the document. Your third way, you can click the checkbox beside it. And this goes for all documents and all libraries. When you click that, you normally have a ribbon that pops up right here. If it does not, you may have to hit the drop down and hit show ribbon. So re-click your document. Your library tools uh, pane opened up right here. You can see edit document. If you click that, it's going to open it up the same way and you avoid the edit uh, button. All right, so deleting a document. If you don't know, you just click the checkbox right here, hit the drop down, and there's delete. You can also select that check checkbox, and right here, there's a delete button, big X, or little X, I guess. If you want to add a document, obviously, the one right in front of our face is the add document button right here. It'll bring up a window that you can browse your computer and upload uh, from your machine or from a share drive. Overwrite existing files. Most of the time you want to do that, but it's exactly what it says it is, so kind of self-explanatory. So we'll cancel that. The other way I want to show you is, let me, before I can show you that, if you have a page like this, you're on a site or page that has multiple things on it, uh, typically home pages. These sections right here are called web parts. So this web part is showing the training library you have on this site. This web part is showing the survey we have on the site. So all they are is containers. But in order to have that, the list or library or survey has to be created before it can be put in these web parts. So if you want to add a lot or uh, get to the specific library or list off this page, the titles are URLs. Click that and it'll take you directly to the library. All right, so this is the whole library. And now you get additional options up here automatically. So if you want to add a document, like we said, you have this add document button. You can also click Upload Document. All right, you click that, it's going to bring up the exact same window. So Upload Document and Add Document are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. New Document, whatever the administrator, when they created this library, set as the default. When you click New Document, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to open up, in this case, Microsoft Word, a brand new document. It's already in edit mode, and when you go to save it, See this? This is uh, Microsoft Office 2013. So if you're still using 2007, you still have this option. It's just going to look different. But this is what you're looking for right here. So you're looking for the URL for that library that you're in. If you click that, it'll open it up. As you can see right here, test site, training site, training library. It's automatically going to save it to that library. Change the name, hit save, you're good to go. Any questions on that? Okay, so adding, editing, and deleting items. How to set up and delete alerts. Has anybody used alerts yet on SharePoint? Yeah, no, I'm seeing both. All right. So, use my drop down here. I want to go back one site. So training library, SharePoint training site. Sorry, Major Johnson. Editing the page. I said editing the page. All right, so uh, oh, what were we talking about? Alerts. All right, so alerts. If you're on a page, a uh, website, or there's a specific document or something, library, that you want to be notified automatically through email if someone adds something or if someone changes something. If it's the cider page, you go up here to the page button, or tab, excuse me. You'll see right here, alert me. Just click that, set an alert on this page. All 
All right, so right there it tells you the title. You can change it, make it whatever you want so that when you see your alert list, you know, oh yeah, that's my alert for the knowledge management site. It automatically puts you in there, but if you become an administrator and you need to add other people to it so that they automatically get alerts, you can add them right here. It's automatically going to go to your email. We do not have a text message system set up. And then this part right here dictates what you're going to get notified about. So as you can see, anything, if anything changes, so that someone edits a document, someone deletes a document, or adds a document. Um, if they change a document, or if they change, you can specifically set if someone changes a document I created. Um, as you can see, everything else is self-explanatory. Notification immediately, or you can set it on an interval. All right, and then if you do start using that heavily, of course you want to know how to get rid of them because they will get very annoying. So when you hit that drop down, you saw add alerts, and then there was also manage alerts. I don't have any set up on this page, but they would be listed here. You could click on it. Uh, the title would be hyperlinked. It would open up a page, and at the bottom it would say delete. Okay. All right, where to get help from? Your section KMR. So the way we're set up in knowledge management, we have the Joint Knowledge Management Committee. We have the KM section, which is myself, Major McIlvain, Tony Middleton, and Sergeant First Class Ray, who helps us out on stuff. Um, it's us four, mostly, that are doing everything in the KM section. So committee, KM section, and then from there, we branch out to the uh, MSCs and staff sections. So there's a primary KMO, Knowledge Management Officer, appointed within each MSC and each staff section. Beneath them, we have KMRs, knowledge management reps. Those are also your site administrators. Um, there's a primary and sometimes an alternate within each section or MSC. So we have not pushed down to battalions, uh, companies, anything like that. So right now, we're just at the MSC level. Once we're going good, uh, we may start pushing down, hey, battalions are required to have a, a site admin you know, on file, on record, that kind of stuff. Um, in the meantime, if your battalion wants one and you want to appoint one, uh, it's a good idea. Just send us the name, we'll track it and everything, and that will be the sole contact we go to instead of bothering the AOs, uh, the readiness NCOs and everything. If it's someone else, we'll go to that person and say, hey, we need help with this or something like that for your site. Um, so whoever that is for your section, if you're not sure who it is, uh, I, I should have brought that list, but just give us an email uh, to the knowledge management mailbox and uh, ask, hey, I'm in this MSC, let me know who my knowledge management rep is. And that will be your site administrator. If you need changes or you need permission to something you currently don't have, talk to them, they'll be able to help you out. The other thing right here, submit a help desk, help desk ticket. Try to go to your knowledge management rep first, since they deal with your website and your permissions, however, if you can't get them, submit a help desk ticket. If they can't fix it, they're going to send it to me, and I'll take care of you. Um, also, please try to recognize the difference between a computer problem and a SharePoint problem. Okay, so if you just can't log on, it's not a SharePoint problem. Okay, it's a computer problem, it's an access problem, that's going to be help desk. So if it's something like that, try to meter it, try to gauge what it is. If you're not sure, just call the help desk. Uh, their extension is 46342. So 46342, if you want to write it down. You should give them a call, be like, hey, I'm having this problem. Do I need to submit a ticket for it? OK, so back to the website real quick. Not that one. Oh, wait, it was that one. So there's a test document here. If anybody wants to create a document, uh, this library is for you. You can play with it, add a document. You can practice editing the document. Uh, create alerts for yourself. Go to any site uh, and do that. Does anybody have any questions on it? Like I said, th this class is meant to go over the basics and give a new user an introduction to it. All right. Has anybody encountered any issues they want to they want to talk about and get some resolution on? Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yep. Yes. And again, that is a factor of dot .mil network. Um, that is one of the features. They haven't turned it off, but they're considering turning it off because they have not I mean, been it's able. It's helpful because instead of making all, if you have like 30 folders, oh, yeah. folders and all, and just drag it over instead of, is there a way to replicate that? Or do you have to do it like make a folder, upload documents, make another folder, upload documents? Unfortunately, it's gruelingly manual. So if that fails for you, you just have to do it manually and it's going to take a while. Um, for me, if it opens at all, it'll open. I'll get to move, like copy and paste documents one time, and then after that I have to wait like four hours before I can do it again. When we're doing this conversion, um, <coughs> is it going to grab all the stuff from the old one and put it in a new one? Or you start so the public site, it's a complete rebuild. Um, but that's not going to affect the staff sections and MSCs too much. However, the, in December when we get the new one for the internal, with all these documents, that's going to greatly impact? No, sir. That is going to be a complete rebuild. Okay. It's going to be on each section and each MSC to transfer their information over. So, Are we getting any resources to do that, or is it just kind of like well, make it happen? It, it's going to be make it happen, sir, but we're, we're going to phase it in. So the knowledge management section will get it in December. From there, we'll have to have the uh, NCGK work group build out the sites. We'll already have templates for the sites and the pages. We'll just drop them in. And then after that, we're going to allow five to six months for all the sections and MSCs to transfer their content from here to the new one. But at that five or six month mark, it's going to be cut off. So whatever's still on there is lost. Do you move something from the old one to the other one, or do you have to move it to like a It's going to be your machine and then up to the new one, most likely. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly as uh, Mr. Middleton said. In addition to cleaning up what's old, uh, it's also going to give us a chance to implement the SOP for uh, NCGKO. So uh, naming convention, standardization, um, retention, retention policy, uh, that kind of stuff. Like I was saying earlier, when your document hits one year old, it automatically triggers a uh, review by your site administrator. Hey, is this old? Uh, does it need to come off SharePoint? No, it's good. Leave it there for another year. Or no, it needs to come off. All right, take it off to your uh, share drive. So it'll give us a chance to implement that kind of stuff. And also right now, I don't know if anybody has used the search feature on SharePoint right here. It's horrible. So, and that has, that's, a, that's a factor of how it's been set up over time. Basically, we were all, it's not just me or you or anything, but when we transferred to this system from 2007, we went to 2010, we just didn't have the knowledge to set up the, the correct structure. So... Um, when people upload documents, they're not adding keywords to it or tags, uh, just like you would see on Google. When you search for Google, you type it in, all it's doing is pinging good uh, uh, tags on each document or a website. And that's how they optimize their search feature. So with the new setup, we're going to do the same thing. When an administrator or when you add a new document to a library, you're going to be required to put, it could be just one tag, you know, knowledge management section or key card something like that. Whatever that document pertains to, you're going to be required to put at least one keyword in there, and that will greatly improve our search feature. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Johnson. Sorry, Major, you're, you're editing everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll hit that real quick. Yeah. So there's 
when you edit a page, if you have that permission, um, saving and closing is going to save your changes. And it's going to look like you've backed out of that page. But then there's two more features to it because we use what's called a publishing site. The, all of North Carolina uses a publishing site. So there's three steps to it. Number one, you save and close it. That puts your changes on the server. Number two, you check it in. All right. Page, so sort of, I'm going to override you here for major. <laughs> All right, so if you've gone in, just like this right here, you edit a page, you make your changes. Step one, you save and close. All right, so I just did that. Now it looks like I've backed out of it. I'm not making changes anymore. But checked out Netable. And on your screen it'll say it's exclusively checked out to First Lieutenant Green. So the next step, go to Page, and you can hit Check In. That puts it back on the server but takes my name off and means someone else can open it up for editing. Until you do that, no one else can do that unless an administrator like myself overrides your checkout. Sounds like you just broke it. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. So if, if, if I'm the cam off my battalion and I override someone's checkout, does it still maintain their changes? No. That's where you have to be careful. If you override their checkout, anything they did and did not save is gone. So the last step, which I shouldn't have already done it, but there's a publish tab also. So when you have it checked out, you save and close it, you hit publish. That's going to make whatever changes you made visible to everyone else. So you're the KMR. You go in and make changes to your site. You save and close it. Nobody else can see it yet. You check it in. No one else can see your changes yet. All right? But someone else can make changes. All right? So when you publish it, it's the same thing, just like any company. If you publish it, now everyone can see what you did. All right? So three steps to it. Any other questions? Anything we can hit? Yeah, so you go to the page tab, and then where it says check out, that'll say check in. Let me go to right there. So that's a top level site, so it's already published. There's no changes, so the publish feature is not available. Um, but right here, Changes have been made, so I could check it in, or I could publish it. Now, you can skip the check-in part. If you go straight to publish, it's going to automatically check it in, because you're saying, hey, I'm done editing. I want everybody to see it. Anybody have any questions? Anything else? All right, so if everybody can, um, before we wrap up, if you go back to the Knowledge management site, that SharePoint training site, and hit that survey. Right there, take that. I think it's less than 10 questions. Some of them are yes or no, so they're quick.